Welcome to Nixnoob. In this video, we're going to take a look at GPT for All. GPT for All is a GUI application that allows you to run large language models and chat with them locally um, without an internet connection. So, large language models being like Llama 3.2, uh, DeepSeek R1, etc. And uh, GPT for All is just a, a really nice way uh, to interact with that with the large language models without without using a terminal so um it also allows you to do rag um which rag stands for uh retrieval augmented generation and basically that's a technique for enhancing the accuracy and reliability of a generative ai model with information from specific and relevant data sources so you can have like your work history or a resume and ask it questions um or a folder of documents and ha ask questions about those documents. Um, so let's go ahead and get this installed. If you go to GTP for all on their website, you can download it straight from their website here. And this is a nice little example of kind of what it looks like. And let me go ahead and get my mug out of the way there. Um, so if you download it from here, you have to sign up to a newsletter. You can also go to their GPT, uh, I mean their GitHub repo and download it from here. Um, so from their GitHub repo, if you just go um, down to the bottom, they have download links for uh, Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu. Um, I've already downloaded the Ubuntu link, but if you download it from here, then you don't have to sign up for their newsletter. Um, so I'm going to go grab that, downloads. I'm just going to, I need to make that executable. And so they have a nice little setup here. And sure. I do accept the license. And so some of this will take a little while to install, um, like downloading the large language models. So I'm going to download a couple of those um, and I will speed up this video so you don't have to watch it download. OK, so that's done setting up. I'm going to click finish and now I'm going to run that. It should put a link on our desktop. There it is. And the first time you run it, it's going to ask you some questions. So opt in to anonymous usage analytics used to improve GPT for all. I'm going to say no to that. But if you don't mind sharing analytics, uh, that might help them out. And then opt in to anonymous sharing of chats um, to the GPT for all data lake. So definitely I don't want my chats going to their data lake. And so here we go. Um, you can also get back to those settings under settings here. We have a theme. I'm going to change that to a dark theme. Sorry about the bright, bright window there. Um, font size, I'm going to set this to like medium. And then important, if you have a NVIDIA GPU, you can right here under device, tell it to use your um, NVIDIA GPU. And I will show you the difference there. Um, Running off CPU, your chats are just going to be a lot slower. If you have a GP, uh, NVIDIA GPU, definitely make sure you set that. Um, default model, once we have some models installed, we can set the default model. Um, suggestion mode is just going to put some suggested questions after each chat. Um, I will turn that off, but I'll leave it on for now so you can see what that does. Um, and then we have a download path for where it's going to store models, and we can set that anywhere we want. I'm going to leave that at the uh, default. And then enable data lake, um, I'm going to turn that off. We can also set the number of threads, well, I mean, <laughs> the number of threads, sorry, um, and whether we want to enable it in the system tray, whether we want to start up a local API server. Um, this would allow you to, you know, write JavaScript applications against the local API, um, and then what port we would want the local API running on, um, and whether we want it to check for updates. Um, so uh, let's go grab some models. If we go back to home here or go back to chat, um, actually, let's go to models. 
go to models and then you click on add model and they have them separated like all models or reasoning models. So if we go to re reasoning models, we've got the deep seek. I'm just gonna keep this on all for now and I'm gonna go download the deep seek R1. And it shows you the RAM required here. Um, so I'm gonna download this one and I'm gonna download um, Llama 3.2. And then I will also download one other one. I'm going to download the Quen 2.15B instruct. Um, so I'll get those started right now. And that's going to take a while, so I'll pause this. So this is still downloading, but I wanted to show you, you can download multiple models um, at the same time. So you can just go through and click the models you want. I ended up doing the DeepSeek R1 to still Quen 7B, which uh, takes eight gigs, gigs of RAM. It's a 4.14 gigabyte file. And then I ended up getting the Llama 3.23B instruct, which is a smaller model. It takes four gigabytes of memory and it's only 1.79 gigabytes. And then I also got the um, the Quen 2-51B instruct. Um, so why that's downloading, we can go ahead and set up our local rag. So I'm going to click on local docs here and say add a collection. I'm just going to call this rag. And I made a folder in my um, documents path. So just in, in documents, I made a folder called rag. And I'm just going to copy this path and say create collection. And then so it's going to build that collection from, from files that are in that directory. And it says that is ready. And then I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go to my local docs and I want to add CSV extension. And I'm going to leave everything else at the defaults. I do want it to show me sources because that'll let me see when it's using a RAG document for its response. And that's it. So if I go back to models here, those are still downloading. I'm going to pause this and then we'll play around with it as soon as it's done. Okay, so that's all downloaded now. Let's maximize this and play around a little bit. So now that we have some models loaded, I can come into settings and set Llama 3.2. 3B instruct as my default model. And if we go to chats here, um, we can either choose a model from the top or just click the load the default. And so if we ask this a question, um, well, one, let's go turn our internet off. So I'm going to just come here to the internet and say no Wi Fi and disconnect from the Ethernet. So now we do not have an internet connection. And I will say, uh, right a poem about flowers and there we go it's writing a poem about flowers we can ask it uh, who plays for the Texas Longhorns football team and so it knows we can say uh, format dot as JSON and it's going to do it. And the nice thing about this interface here is we can, you know, copy our copy our results. Um, so it knows it knows a ton of stuff. It's amazing how much how much information is distilled in these models. Uh, the information is not going to be current. It's going to be from when the model was distilled. Um, but it's amazing how much information it has. If I say uh, you know list movies about boats, it's going to do it. And then we could ask that to um, format that as CSV. And 
and um, now for the for the rag stuff, if I ask it, um, what is the population of Texas in 2024? <clears throat> it's gonna say that basically it doesn't know, but so it's projecting for 2024 and 2023. Um, but if we turn on our rag, and then ask the same question again, it's got an answer and it's giving us the source as that file. And if we go look at that file, we can see that the answer for Texas in 2024, this is a 2024 column, is 31,290,831. And that is the answer it gave us. So we can also try that using a different model. Let's just tell it to do, um, well, one, let me copy that prompt. If we go to a different model, it's gonna erase our conversation. We could start a new chat using a different model, like um, let's just do new chat and say deep seek. So as soon as we start a new chat, the rag is gonna be off. And the rag could also be, um, like I named this folder rag, but you could have as many folders as you want and it's gonna give you, um, it's gonna give you options for each one. Like when we go to local docs, we can add as many collections as we want here. And in our chat, we're gonna be able to select which ones we want it to, you know, talk to basically. Um, so this is using DeepSeek now. So DeepSeek is a little different cause it's a thinking model. So it's gonna think and you can drop that down and see, basically watch it think, which is very cool. Um, let's see if that comes back with the right answer. There we go. It got the, well, it formatted that as a dollar sign for some reason. Um, let me look at that. I don't think I have that formatted <laughs> that way here. Let's see. And no, we do not have dollar signs in there. So I don't know where it got that dollar sign from. Um, but it did get the right the right number. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see how uh, Quinn does. So same question with Quinn. And uh, estimated, interesting. So it did use our source. And, but it said it's estimated to be and gave us the same, the right answer. So a little bit different response format, but it, it still had the right answer. Um, so these chats are gonna be um, context aware. So if I, if I do a new chat here and say, um, let's just use Llama and say, who is the president? So it's telling me that there's a cutoff, but as, as far as it's, you know, cutoff, it was Joe Biden. And then let's say a new chat and say um, load llama again and say, um, who is Donald Duck? All right, so um, if we go back to our president one and say, how old is he? it knows we're talking about Joe Biden. So it's giving us uh, Joe, Joe Biden's age. If we go back to Donald Duck and say, how old is he? It's gonna tell us like estimated, you know, and that's really how old he is from when he was created. We can ask it, who is his wife? Interesting. There it is. His his love interest and wife is Daisy Duck. And if we go back to Biden and say who is his wife, it's going to tell us that it was uh, Jill Biden. <clears throat> 
Okay, so that's, I mean, that's that's basically it. You've got context-aware chats. You've got a rag that you can turn on and add, add as many folders or documents to as you want. Um, we can also, um, I, I did want to show you that if I come into my settings and turn, um, turn this back to CPU so it's not using the GPU, and if we just ran this again, it's it's got to do some processing and reload the model using the CPU instead of the GPU, so it takes it a minute to, to do that. Um, but you can see the response is is much slower, but it still works. You don't have to have a you know super fast GPU. You don't have to have an NVIDIA card to be able to, to use uh, Olama or uh, GPT for all. If I go back to settings and tell it back, put it back on NVIDIA, go back to that chat and just run that again, you can see the difference. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have fun using uh, GPT for all. And uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future content. Thanks for watching.